Good morning, Lee. It's so wonderful to have a bit of time with you today. Um, as we have briefly chatted about, I should say happy Thanksgiving to you. Uh, <laughs> it's so fun to connect with amazing, unique leaders from all over the world. And we're so excited to have you join us in Santa Fe for the Wisdom for a Better Tourism Retreat. Um, to get us started, we would love you to just introduce yourself and maybe share a little bit about your story. Sure. Um, actually, thanks for um, the invitation, Jen. Um, my name is Lee Han. I'm currently stationed in Seoul, Korea. I've been a global nomad starting from Boston, U.S. to um, Abu Dhabi in UAE and um, Hong Kong and Shanghai. Um, finally, back in, in Seoul, Korea, where I was born. Um, I have been, um, I started as an architect and then um, switched to the real estate development um, many years ago. I've been developing mixed use and hospitality um, products um, in the real estate. And then I somehow got switched to um, building a wellness retreat in near Shanghai. And uh, that notion was not existing. So I was literally walking in the fog to try to find some tangible things to grab. And now that's like, um, that's like 2012. Now everybody knows the wellness and I've been going through one cycle from a piece of ground to, um, you know, build product and operation. And um, ever since I actually went, uh, gone through that, um, the cycle, I suddenly realized that the concept of wellness is so needed to everybody since the world is changing so fast. There are many so uh, there are so many people who are lost um, these days. So um, that's who I am, and that's why I am um, still exploring um, to find something um, you know beneficial to a lot of people while I'm doing my real estate development work. Wow. I mean, it's just such an extraordinary contribution to the world. What a, what a gift to, to bring wellness to so many people. Um, mm -mm -mm. It's a real inspiration. Yeah. I mean, especially, you know, when we started this like um, 1.5 million square feet, um, project from a piece of dirt. Nobody yeah. believed that we could have, uh, we, we can build this. Um, but fat time, and fast forward, the time fast forward, um, when we finished the construction, everybody was so touched and um, to see this kind of a new animal <laughs> in hey. the real estate. <laughs> and wow. then I am still very touched because people actually, um, get transformed and touched by going through the programs that um, where um, the the place where I built, I mean, which I built. So, yes. So it is still a um, very um, emotional process, even after, even, uh, even though I left the place about six years ago. Wow. What a, what a legacy, Lee. That is, that's really extraordinary. Um, I love the vision that you had before before it had existed, that you had that vision. That's really beautiful. Um, so I'm curious, what called you to join the Wisdom Retreat for Better Tourism? Um, I think that kind of captures um, what we need today, especially mm -hmm. um, going through the COVID, a lot of, uh, you know, worldview, um, have changed, but then it's still abstract concept, right? So regenerative tourism, you know, we have to, um, you know, take care of earth and all the constituents on earth. It's still very um, abstract concept. But when I heard about this wisdom retreat for better tourism, it's not about tourism industry. It's about um, how we see the world in a different way from past. So I said, okay, um, I'll join it because in that way, my concrete, the abstract 
thoughts can be more shaped into a specific uh, terms, which helps me as well. If that helps me, it helps me to voice out and make things, um, you know, in front of people. So that's the main motivation. Oh, I love that. It's it's perfect. Absolutely. Oh, fantastic. So what are your kind of your personal aspirations or hopes for the future of tourism? I think that the tourism that world word um is very is is outdated. It's mm -hmm. it's molded in a certain way for many, many years. Now the whole world is changing. Um, you know, I think this um the this world, I mean, thinking through the quantum physics, epigenetics, all the scientific um discovery is unpeeling what um we thought um uh mystical things or non-scientific. I mean, for example, that's energy chi, you know. Uh, now, so we are entering, we already entered into a different uh, world. And I think this is, um, this is as big as or bigger than the first industrial revolution. So therefore, um, I think the tourism industry needs to expand its horizon and see how impactful that is. For example, you know, GDP. Um, it's like a, it, it's 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 no longer GDP. We need to insert the human and happiness and health factor into it. So therefore, I support what Bhutan supports as um, gen, uh, uh, gross national happiness index. Um, so therefore, I think human needs to back in, uh, insert it back into the equation. So therefore. Tourism can actually influence the um, economic perspective and how we need to, um, you know, live our like a, a philosophy for our life. There are so many, um, you know, um, areas that this new or transformed um, tourism can contribute to uh, for human to better live. Yeah. I gosh. I love your your version of our our future index. I can I can really see that as the the direction that I hope I hope our world is going in. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to hear your answer to the next question. Then, <laughs> because now I want to switch a little bit and talk about wisdom. Right what, right, right. what role do you feel that wisdom plays in tourism? Not just today, but sort of in the future. What's coming? I think that um, the wisdom plays in a different way. Um, I think the wisdom, um, I think wisdom applies to more of to the outside world so far. I think wisdom needs to um, apply needs to be applied to to our own world inside us. So therefore, I think the. Um, um, especially in the context of the what's going on in the world right now. Um, racism, um, very convoluted politics. It's happening everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. Before, religion helps us. Religion helped us. Some kind of political leader help us by saying we are marching to this direction. But those parts are having issues these days. So people tend to be kind of, in my opinion, is lost. People are lost. I mean, there got to be an anchor to um, go through frustrated situation. And I think the wisdom surfaced from this, this context and basically says that, you know, we have to see the world not from the external lens uh, perspective, from our internal lens perspective. So therefore, why, why do we have to experience new things? Because we need to transform ourselves by looking at different things. I think this is part of the one example of the wisdom. We need to recognize our need from our inside uh, perspective and transform ourselves first to tr before transforming other people or other world. That's how I think uh, the wisdom can play um, a very important role 
moving forward. It's amazing. Yeah. Such it's such such wisdom that you're sharing. <laughs> <laughs> from the personal experience <laughs> exactly right exactly yes Thank yes, you. yes and why is transformational travel important mm -hmm. to you i think it puts me um without any uh biases or what's called common sense and what the, any external label put on me I'm basically I feel like um you know if I go to somewhere I have never been I feel like um I'm back in the nature being naked so I don't have any bias or anything I just need to find um new things and or find a place to stay I think that 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 whole the um the mental process or emotional process is is filled with curiosity not anything not money not title no political agenda it's just like you know i need to find a place to stay that that puts myself in a little bit pure kind of a condition um without calculating anything you know we're we're you know multitasking every day so I think that that process and also looking at the looking at nature or looking at something or uh, our ancestors some um, you know traces that basically again brings the curiosity why would they have done this why would they have why would um they have chosen this place so therefore I think the having a lot of questions out of curiosity actually put some everything back to um you know back to the um childhood kind of a condition and in that process just like um uh, being curious on a very simple small thing and finding an answer through the process brings a huge joy so therefore, this kind of experience of little joy after one joy another, you know, that actually is a fundamental basis trans, uh, to transform anybody. Yeah, I love the concept of being stripped to, to stripped to simplicity. Yeah, and you're just stripped down, and you just said, you know, where where do I need to sleep? Where shall I find some food? And let me be curious about where I am. And that becoming the ethos of, uh, of joy. Yes, I think the I think the part of reason why we suffer so much these days is that we have too many things compared to the past. So yeah, we're we're cluttering ourselves, um, ourselves in that way we are lost we're we're in the labyrinth that we that is created by ourselves so in order to get out of it everything needs to go back needs to be back to being a simple situation so i think making things simple is is a very um important concept and also you know this is related how to um how i see chaos um, actually, I'm not afraid of chaos. I'm not avoiding chaos because there is a certain rule, very quiet rule in the chaos. And how to get to that? You have to think very simple way. So yeah. true. I, I have a little note on my desk. It literally says, slow down. <laughs> That's right. That's it's right. Slow down. It's okay. Go a little slower because you're right. That societal pressure of go, 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 hurry, accomplish, push. It it does uh, strip you away a bit of that in, intrinsic wisdom that you speak of that we do have from our ancestors and that, that wanderlust, that nomadic spirit that I can sense in you. Um, yeah, yeah, and this is related with um, our everyday situation. There are so many traumas, small traumas and big traumas. At one time, um, when I finished my uh, wellness project, a couple tra 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 uh, traumas happened actually. So I got so lost, and then I 
you know, sat down and think. And I'm like, how am I going to get out of this um, situation? Um, and I learned from uh, at the time, I learned that, okay, just uh, try to um, see the old situation in a very simple way and take care one thing after another that will get me out of this very um, chaotic situation. So, um, yeah, I experienced it and, and I actually um, am adapting this wisdom to every day. Yeah, I can truly relate to that. I had a Zen teacher once tell me, sometimes you just have to chop the vegetables and make the stew. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> You're getting so lost in all of your things. Just focus on the moment right now, today, and the things, they will work themselves out. So it's a good I'm reminder so that, you're, that you're bringing me today. I appreciate that. <laughs> So my next question is sort of a fun one. If you could wave a magic wand and change just one aspect of tourism or travel, what would it be? Yeah, this is um this is a quite interesting um and a difficult question. <laughs> I think the the magic wand um would be the um, uh, magic one would be um, redefined tourism. Um, let's let's you know tourism so far is um, basically go where you have never been or go where um, there are uh, famous places. Um, I think we need to redefine the definition of tourism is basically search yourself. Um, places, no, not that it, uh, as important as uh, before, but um, if you shift your um, lens to um, search yourself, um, the place can be very differently defined. Um, you know, places where a lot of way ancient wisdom exists, which is has not been on the map of uh, tourism, can be a new destination. And that that in that destination, if there are mindful travelers, then it will help the local economy. It will help to keep the you know that specific ancient uh, wisdom um, with us for a longer time. So it will change a lot of a lot of aspects of the world, I think. Yeah, that concept of uncharted territory, but within yourself. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So that's why I, I, I really support what TTC is doing. Basically, TTC is putting um, uh, unpopular or unknown places on the map and I think there are a lot of answers um, that we're seeking for in that place. Yeah, I agree. And, and you never know when you'll find that wisdom. It happens yes. so unexpectedly and it can happen anytime and anywhere in the strangest of ways. All of a sudden that wisdom just comes in when you're ready. That's how exactly. I, but I've I think that's it. a magic wand. It just like, comes <laughs> unexpected way. <laughs> Yeah. Trust the timing, as they say. <laughs> That's great. Well, in closing, speaking of wisdom, do you have any parting words of wisdom that you would like to share with this community? I think um, this is related with what um, uh, the world that um, the Joe Pine um, talked in the context of transformational uh, transformation economy. He says, new me, I, it just resonates uh, with me a lot. I think, the, um, but to me, if I can add, um, before the new me happens, um, I think the return to me needs to happen first. So my kind of parting wisdom um, would be, uh, return to me. Ah, oh, can't think of a more 
beautiful message to to close out our time together. Thank you so much for taking time to answer all of our questions. Um, we really appreciate it, and we can't wait to see you at the retreat. I know. I'm so looking forward that that um, it's a three nights, four days, right? Um, um, let me let me double check. I'll end the recording, and we can keep chatting. Let me just stop yeah. the recording.